All right, engineers, so in this video, we're gonna talk about the antibiotics used to be able to treat the specific pathway called the folic acid pathway. Um, we already talked briefly, um, uh, we, we already talked about the actual uh, antibiotics of cell wall synthesis and function. And, okay, so if you haven't seen that video, go watch that video, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on the actual antibiotics for the folic acid pathway. All right, so in order for us to talk about these antibiotics, we have to know the folic acid pathway, which is really, really important for this actual bacterial cell to survive, and I'll explain why. Okay, so what are these two reagents in here that we need? So one of the reagents is actually called para-aminobenzoic acid, okay? The other component here is teridine, okay, teridine. Okay, so para-aminobenzoic acid and teridine. They're gonna be catalyzed this, enzy this enzyme, and we'll talk about this enzyme, but what do they produce by the, you know, as this reaction? The end of the reaction will produce what's called dihydroteroic acid. Okay, so they're synthesizing dihydroteroic acid. So what could this enzyme possibly be? It's called dihydroteroate synthesis, synthetase. Okay, so what is the name of this specific enzyme right here? Uh, we're just gonna denote it here. We're gonna put di hydroteroate synthetase enzyme, okay? So again, this is called dihydroteroate synthetase. So what is this enzyme doing? It's taking and converting para-aminobenzoic acid and then teridine and converting it into dihydroteroic acid. Okay, so then dihydroteroic acid is actually converted into a specific structure. What is that structure here called? Then it's converted into what's called dihydrofolate or folic acid, right? So then it's converted into dihydrofolate. Dihydrofolate or dihydrofolic acid. Then that dihydrofolic acid is then converted into tetrahydrofolate or tetrahydrofolic acid. And that is catalyzed, this reaction here is catalyzed by this enzyme. This enzyme is actually going to be called di hydrofolate reductase, okay? So this enzyme here is called dihydrofolate reductase and it's catalyzing the conversion of dihydrofolic acid into tetrahydrofolic acid. Then tetrahydrofolic acid is important because why? It helps in the synthesis of purines and pyrimidines. What are these components of? DNA. So in other words, this whole pathway, paraminobenzoic acid to dihydroteroic acid, which is catalyzed by dihydroteroate synthetase, dihydroteroic acid is then converted into dihydrofolate, or dihydrofolic uh, dihy uh, acid. Dihydrofolate is then converted into tetrahydrofolate by the dihydrofolate reductase enzyme. And then tetrahydrofolate is then can be converted into purines or pyrimidines. All right, why are these important? Because they're components to make up the DNA. So if this pathway can't occur, can you synthesize functional DNA? No, you won't have the necessary components for that. So you wanna be able to give drugs for bacteria because it's a good thing to be able to inhibit this for bacteria because then bacteria can't survive. So what drugs could you give? Well, the first thing I'm gonna target is I'm gonna target this enzyme right there. So if I wanna target specifically this dihydroteroate synthetase enzyme, I'm gonna use a drug and that drug that I'm gonna specifically use over here is actually gonna be a group of sulfonamides. So let's say I pick a specific sulfonamide like uh, sulfamethoxazole. So sulfa methoxazole. Okay, so sulfamethoxazole is a specific type of sulfonamide. What is sulfamethoxazole doing? It's inhibiting this dihydroteroate synthetase. So this enzyme is being inhibited because what's happening is he's acting like a substrate analog and inhibiting this enzyme from binding onto paraminobenzoic acid. Now, sulfamethoxazole is really good at being able to treat, um, they actually use it to treat toxoplasmosis. So they can actually use it to treat toxoplasmosis. You know this is actually a, um, 
parasitic infection, which is caused by the different types of cats, right? So the cats can actually pass on this parasite. Very, very dangerous, especially during pregnant women, right? So you can also use this to treat uh, specifically no cardiosis. So no cardiosis actually is an infection. Uh, so it's a bacteria that can cause a infection specifically uh, within the pulmonary, uh, so within the lungs, or within, even on the skin too. So it can actually treat uh, no cardiosis or no cardiobacteria. And it's also good at being able to treat bacteria that cause uh, urinary tract infections. Okay, so urinary tract infections. Now, there's another drug that's targeting this enzyme, this dihydrofolate reductase enzyme. What is that drug called? That specific drug is actually called trimethoprim. So trimethoprim. Now trimethoprim is really specific. It's usually only good at being able to treat uh, certain types of enterobacteria. Okay, so it's good at being able to treat different types of enterobacteria. So enterobacteria, um, it's a specifically a type of gram-negative bacteria, and it can cause a lot of problems. Obviously, it can work within the enteric nervous system, but they're naturally a part of our, our gut flora. But if this bacteria actually causes damage, it can cause a lot of certain types of uh, gastrointestinal tract infections, right? So enterobacteria is actually going to be kind of a gram negative bacteria, all right? Now, trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole are good at being, if you, or they're best when you combine them, when you give them together. Uh, together, they're actually called Bactrim. Okay, they're actually called Bactrim, okay, uh, by brand name. And uh, Bactrim, if you give these two together, they have a little bit more of a broader spectrum. So not only could they be able to treat like enterobacteria, uh, so bacteria that are causing certain types of infections like enterobacteria or toxoplasmosis or nocardiosis or UTI, but it can also treat respiratory tract infections. And it also is good at being able to treat a condition called pneumocystitis carinae. Okay, and this is actually a, uh, it's actually caused by yeast, and uh, it's actually more common in individuals who are immunocompromised, so like, you know, HIV or AIDS patients or people who are on chemotherapy. So, they're very, very dangerous, very, very dangerous certain types of infections, okay, but you can get back to them to better treat that also. All right, engineers, so in this video, we basically covered the specific types of antibiotics that are being able to treat uh, certain types of bacterial infections that are, but specifically targeting the folic acid pathway. In the next video, we'll talk about antibiotics that are specifically targeting protein synthesis.